Um, so I just wanted to alert to you that we are recording the meeting. I hope that's okay. Just to share with the other people who have booked but possibly weren't able to make it this afternoon. So I hope that that's in order with you. Um, this is a, the first time that we are doing the new members chat. So thank you for being um, guinea pigs along with the SAPEX team. And we just thought it was a good idea to just give you a 30 minute kind of update on what's happening in the association at the moment and how you can make better use of your membership. Um, and just to give you some, um, some details on what all our plans are at the moment and to thank you for um, joining the association and kudos to all of you on it on investing in yourself. And um, we look forward to a long journey in whichever form it might be um, as you become um, better and more proficient supply chain professionals. So I'm going to introduce the team to you now, the SAPEX team, and then uh, we'll just go into the slide presentation and Elaine will, um, Elaine will start. And, but before we do, um, I'll introduce Tanya and ask Tanya if she's willing to put her camera on. I'm not sure, she's just had an operation, so I hope she's doing okay. But um, Tanya is our business development executive for SAPEX and has been a stalwart of the association for very many years. She is highly knowledgeable. She's been involved in all areas of the association. So she's a really great person, a go-to person to talk to about um, you know, the history of the association, the professional body, and she'll touch on that this afternoon. And um, she really is our, uh, she is our, um, she's our face. She leads all the webinars and community connects. I should have mentioned that um, Jenny Froome is our COO. She's unable to make it this afternoon because she has a person from outside the country coming to visit her for a meeting. So she sends her apologies. But Jenny, like Tanya, has um, been around for 20 years and they are just so well known in the industry and also a great support and a great source of information or people that you maybe want to reach out to or you're wanting a connection in another African country. Jenny is your, is your, your team person. Next on my screen is Bev D'Souza and some of you may have already had interaction with Bev. She's our super efficient education manager and she runs all of the education part of SAPEX and she'll be chatting to us this afternoon about what's on currently um, up in our courses and what's on our calendar. And Bev um, has a great relationship with our um, education partners and can really help you with finding your way in your education journey with SAPEX. Um. Elaine, <laughs> Elaine Andrews is our membership manager and she you would have already had all lots of lovely efficient integration interaction with her and she will take us through again just a reminder of the benefits of the membership packages that you've all taken out um, so thanks elaine thanks for loving and cherishing our members so beautifully um, and then we have gugu uh, gugu is in our in the office at midrand and she's there every day answering the phone and dealing with all your questions and the conference bookings and the event bookings. So she's the engine behind, um, behind all our events and administration and education assistance. And she does a great job and she's got nice hair. And then we have Cindy who set up the meeting for us. Cindy is, there she is. And Cindy is with the Up Avon team and she manages the events for SAPEX, the overall coordination of it as well as a lot of Upaven work, specifically managing the speakers at our annual conference, which is coming up in August. I haven't missed any, I haven't got any other staff, have I? No, great, okay. Um, so that's me, I'm gonna hand over to Elaine now and she's gonna share some slides and chat about the membership and then we'll just follow on. Please feel free to interrupt us, put your hands up, ask a question, and um, and this is very informal, so don't feel that you can't ask a question as we're going along. Um, 
please feel free to just interact with us. As I said earlier, this is the first time we're trying this. So thanks for being guinea pigs on this journey with us. And it's fantastic to have such a great turnout. Elaine, over to you, my darling. Thank you, Claire. Thanks for the lovely introduction. And thank you to everyone for participating this afternoon. I'm going to share my screen now um, with the start of the presentation that we've got for you. Um, I'm not too great on IT, so <laughs> if I do bluffs it, give me please um, bear with me for a second. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I'm just trying to get to share screen. And I closed the sliding <laughs> slide. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Um, it's always a challenge to just try and find the actual presentation. Uh, um, I've got it, but I'm just trying to do the sharing of the screen and making it a, a slideshow at the same time. Okay. That's my uh, thing that I'm going through at the moment. Anyways, um, I think I can. Uh, sorry, guys, just give me a second. There. Okay, pic picture everyone having a cup of tea, Elaine. Don't stress. Yeah. <laughs> Glass of wine at this point. Glass of wine. <laughs> just, true, just true. Okay. And then you can and then you can go into slideshow. Sorry. Okay, I've got it. And then oh, there we go. Then Thank you. Go okay. to slideshow. Go to slideshow. Right. Okay. Um, go into slideshow at the top. Yeah, I'm Need to move this away so I can, there we go, um, from beginning. Brilliant. Thank you. Sorry about that, everyone. I did move your friend. <laughs> okay, so Claire's done the introduction already. I'm just going to jump through these slides. Um, this would have been great face to face, but unfortunately we can't. So we're doing the whole antisocial face to face thing at the moment. All right, this is our agenda. Claire's done our introduction um, and uh, yeah, the speakers, which Claire's touched on already. So <clears throat> a little bit about SAPEX. Um, I'm not sure if everyone knows or not know. Um, SAPEX is over 50 years old. So we have been around the block for quite a long time. Um, and it shows we obviously doing something right at the end of the day. And uh, we do have Quite a, a really good following locally into Africa and globally as well. Um, let me go for the next slide. So, what about SAPEX? Um, what basically our four pillars is education, it is networking, um, memberships, and monthly our monthly events where it's with networking as well, and it is your um, informal learning and of course our annual conferencing. Um, the last year we our annual conference was online for the first time and this year it will be online again but generally it is a three-day event um, that runs for two days of conferencing and then the workshops and site visits on the third day. Um, so that's about so memberships. Um, as well, memberships has been, you know, some people look at it as being old fashioned, but at the end of the day, um, standing all together and uniting, we are far stronger than the person individually. And we are there to support you at the end of the day. Um, I always refer to us like glue. Um, people come to us and we will stick them all together and make up that puzzle. Uh, that's what I always say about SAPEX, we the glue, that keeps the supply chain together. Um, what I'm going to talk about is the membership portal and some of the some of your benefits as well. 
So um, being a SAPEX member obviously shows um, professionalism and credibility for yourself at the end of the day. Um, we, you will, you know, the saying of being the purple cow and standing out from everyone else. This is you at the end of the day with your colleagues. So it is definitely um, something to be proud of and you should boast about it. Education, we have formal and we have informal. We will touch on the formal education side. The informal side, as I said, was the webinars, um, our, work, um, our site visits, and that's when we are able to do them face to face. So for now, we are just running um, a lot of online webinars at the moment. Um, your perks as well, over one of the your perks as well is discounted rates for the workshops and our conferencing as well. We do have member rates for our conference, which are uh, at a quite a reduced rate. We do hope that you guys will register to attend our conference in August. It, um, yeah, so it'll be easy, it's face to face, or not face to face, sorry, online. So it really doesn't matter where you are on the globe because we can accommodate for anyone and everyone at the end of the day. Um, the uh, profile, the member portal, I'm going to swap screens again, heaven forbid, <laughs> and show you just about, I am going, on, going online onto the portal and show you a little bit of things, what you can do, because um, you need to make the most out of it and you need to get the most out of um, your membership at the end of the day. Um, as I say, when it comes to renewal or whatever, um, you must always feel like, feel guilty about using us excessively because that's what we want. <laughs> okay. Um, employment opportunities. Definitely uh, people who are registered with SAPEX and who have um, certifications are far more marketable, if that's a correct way to say it, at the end of the day. Um, it definitely stands a good light. There are quite a couple of recruitment agencies where part of the recruitment um, criteria is to be a SAPEX member at the end of the day. So it, it really does help one at the end. Then um, we also do a membership motivation letter. So um, a lot of you know, companies are not too keen now because of cost cutting to pay for memberships, but we do have a membership motivational letter where you can motivate your boss why they should pay for it at the end of the day, because they are benefiting from you um, and your knowledge skills. And also, if you have your certifications, we have a motivation letter for that as well. Um, then, as I said, with networking, we the glue, and unfortunately, this is online at the moment. But um, you guys must just please make the most of it. And this, you know, once we've got our Q and A afterwards as well, maybe we can do a quick introduction of our members to each other and just say, "How's it? How are you? And what industry you're from?" Just a quick little thing. Um, Claire, if that will be all right with you, if we can just start it in. I think it would be nice for everyone to do that. Okay, so I'm going to swap my screens quickly and I'm going to go to the member portal and I'm going to show you a couple of things. Okay, so I'm sure that all of you have your usernames and have gone onto our member portal already and figured out how to work it. And I say that, but obviously you have because you managed to register for this. So congratulations. So up at the top where you've got your member profile. So if you go into there now, you'll see just your basic things on the portal. So you've got your membership card. Um, if you want to print this out and attach it to a CV, or if you're wanting a nice formal one at the end of the day, pop me an email and I'll give you a nice formal one so you can always add it to your CV. So this is just a very generic, um, you know, electronic one at the end of the day. Then um, you've got your edit your bios. This is where you can go in and basically draw up like a mini CV of yourself here as well. Um, and then you know, there's a lot of um, so there's a lot of details that um, are nice to have, so like example, adding in your birth date because 
you never know. Um, we always we always send a little birthday hamper out one day, maybe, or just a wishing you a happy birthday message. Um, it's just good to know that. The, this is on your financial sites and your payment history. You can renew your membership online yourself when it does expire, or just about when it's about to expire. You will receive, there's generally four notifications that go out on your membership renewal. And you can log on and then you can request your invoice here. Um, then you can also re review your membership status on this little button here as well. Um, you see, and you can see that. Then, um, the, I'm going to just go into, so you've got pages as well. Um, so this is like, like I was saying, on a, almost like a CV thing just now. Um, if you want to, you know, market yourself or whatever it may be, or market what your company does, you can all update your information on these pages here. And then we've got your event registrations. So this will show you all the events that you have attended so far. So if you are studying or you've got your CVD points to maintain, you can go into here, do a printout of it and submit it with your um, CVD points, manage your CVD points that you require. And um, then we have um, your blogs. So uh, we can go in and you can see who's blogging, what they're blogging about. You can blog yourself and just start getting interactive with each other. If there are special interest groups that you would like us to create, uh, please let me know. We can look at it and we can create a special interest or a special discussion group for you. And then we can invite people into it or you can invite other colleagues or other members that you know of to join the special interest groups. Um, there you, we've got photo galleries as well, where you can update your photos. Um, and then you can obviously, um, they, they are approved back end as well by ourselves first. So um, yeah. Then the next, uh, the, main, the next on the member profiling is uh, professional. Let's go into uh, referrals. So the nice thing about what we've got as well is if you would like to, I will show you more of the referrals just now of how it works. But if you've got colleagues or whatever, and you really think they would benefit from being a SAVEX member, you can go into the referrals here and I'll show you shortly how you can track it as well. Um, then what else is interesting for you guys? Oh, your CVs, I'll touch on this as well to show you more about how to do it. So you can create your CV here, or you can look for job postings as well. Um, I've done a how-to guide on how to do this, and I'll share with you, I'll show you where to find it on our system as well. So this is where you can up to upload your CV. Um, and then other people who are looking for, you know, who are looking for um, staff will see it as well from, from their side once they're logged on. And then this is for the career postings. If you, if your company is looking for a position or have, has a position available, this is where you can create it here. So if I can just show you how it looks when you want to go look for one. And for all, unfortunately, it is a bit of a lot of click throughs. It's, we can't change it. It's just how it is. So all you do is just our glass, click, click, click. And, um, and then you go into your search down at the bottom here. Okay. So here we go. We've got one opening available at the moment. Um, and then let's go in and you can see it. So... This is a, um, here we go. I'm just wanting to try to show you how we, you can actually see the, um, how you can actually see it. Uh, there we go. Okay, so this is the criteria of what they're looking for at the moment. The company is Aerosuit. Um, and then, it will tell you as well at the bottom of how to apply for it as well. So that's quite a nice feature that we have as well um, and definitely to make use out of it. So what I was saying to you earlier about your how-to guides. So if you go up into memberships 
and you scroll down to how membership how to guide. Here you will see your different how to guides, how to search for a career opening, which I've just showed you now. Um, the PDF, PDF version of it. Sorry, someone else I think has got their microphone on. Um, and here you'll see all on how to navigate through how to look for a um, how to look for a, a job opening or how to um, how to um, apply for one as well. And there we've got another membership referral, oh, which I spoke to you about as well. Um, this is quite nice. We you can do your referrals, or this is basically step by step of how to do it. Um, to from and then you go, you're a savings member, and then you can actually trace it as well at the end of the day if the person has picked up on it or not. Um, and you will get notified to say, yes, this person has now signed up as a SAVEX member. Um, so those are basically your, your little how-tos. If there's anything that you're not sure about doing, please let me know and I will add, create another how-to guide. So it's easy for, you know, to make your life easy. Um, there's another one on how to renew your membership as well. So maybe just uh, print this out or what, just remember that it is on our website. So if you've forgotten anything of how to do, because I know once a year, you know, our memory does get a little bit um, forgetful on some things that we don't use often. So you've got a nice uh, reference back to it. I'm Elaine, now going to, to sorry, Claire. Sorry to interrupt you. There's a question from Jan Hermanis, if you want to check in the chat. Box, sure. or if you want to, to do that when you've finished at the end, just so that you uh, quick question. Sure, no, I'll go through it now, no problem. Uh, what happens when the past events do not uh, tally up to the ones that you have joined? Does um, AECM webinars also count for points uh, to have joint membership? Yes, they do. So let's tackle first part of the question first. Um, so in the beginning, when we first uh, moved over to our member management portal, portal, it was a bit of a learning curve. So one or two events, um, we didn't have them correctly set up, which we've learned on now. And all the events will show in your, um, in your profile of being attended. Before that, we would have to go back into our old system and we can pick up on history there as well. So. In general, we haven't, you know, we can always go back and trace anything for you. Um, and then also your maintenance points. Yes, if you attend uh, obviously Apex webinars, and it also doesn't have to be only SAPEX events. If it's any other event where you can get a certificate or proof of attendance that is supply chain related, you will earn points to it as well. Um, Jan, does that answer your question a little bit? Yes, thanks, Elaine. Pleasure. No problem, anytime. I'm going to go back to my presentation now. So hold your breath, I'm going to swap screens again. Okay, um, all right, so I've just gone through that. Um, then there's just a quick thing about the importance of belonging to a community, which I've spoken about it earlier. Um, it is the basically uh, all standing together, the knowledge sharing, um, the sharing of ideas, and also just your stumbling blocks in life. You know, sometimes we always think, you know, it's, it's only our company has this problem, but we're really, in reality, most companies have the same problems at the end of the day. So it's just nice to bounce things off each other and get to know each other and get to know the, you know, the, the different teething problems that we all share. Um, the events, Claire is going to speak on a bit, um, well, she's going to speak on it just now. I just had a bit in on, um, Part of our events, like I say, you know, we would do a lot of face, we used to do a lot of face-to-face -face events. 
Um, and unfortunately for now, we can't do them. Uh, last year, we managed to get a couple of face-to-face -face events in just before lockdown. Uh, one of the last ones we did was a site visit at BMW, their plant out in Roslyn. It was the most amazing experience to go and see the actual cars being made from, from, from a shell. Well, before even the shell, it was absolutely amazing. Um, you know, the types of events we run is, you know, the Vashini group um, going on to uh, Cape Union Mart's production floor, um, SAB, uh, to McCain's uh, Imperial Health Sciences. It's just the, the, the very variety of events that we do is, is endless at the end of the day. Um, but for now, we are focusing on uh, workshops and things online at the moment. If anyone does, their company would like to host an event in the future or uh, present on webinars or any ideas or desires that you would like, please let me know and see of how we can accommodate you. Okay, um, so the uh, student and young professional packages, I think Claire's going to touch on that with her, young, with her um, youth development profile as well. Um, and then I'm going to hand over to Tanya to speak about the young, um, sorry, the, the professional body and small, medium and micro enterprises. Thank you. Thanks, Elaine. Any Did questions I... while Tanya um, gets ready? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, sorry. Great. Over to you, Tanya. Okay, I'm going to dive in here. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, right. So I apologize. I'm going to be very rude and hide behind my camera for the, today's session, but I'm sure at some point I will see you at another event. So forgive me for that. So small business is a very, very important part of our the stabilization and development of our economy because the vast majority of revenue or GDP is uh, derived from small businesses. And the only way that we're going to pull ourselves out of the situation that we're in is if we have efficient um, small businesses and they're able to grow. The vast majority of small businesses die within the first three years. Um, and that's generally because they don't have not only sufficient um, business management knowledge, but they don't have any understanding of supply chain management. So they understand marketing to an extent. Um, they understand um, some financial things. You know, they've got those basics, but as their business grows, um, they struggle to, to, to adapt to that. So it's kind of a situation where if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So if my business is going, why must I make changes? So, I mean, obviously the obvious answer to that is, well, to improve it, to make more money, to produce more items, um, to grow your market, to, you know, further into African countries, whatever the case is. But that's basically what it's all about. So SAPEX's role is to provide very basic introductory level supply chain management training for people in SME businesses to understand how they can bring that into the organization and how it can make a difference, how they can start measuring to see um, the difference it's made and the value it's added. So it's a very, very new initiative. It's very exciting. We've got an awesome team of people that, that are working on it, very passionate people that predominantly come from small businesses. So they really understand the challenge. So if you, for example, work for a company that has uh, enterprise development, enterprise develop, enter, I really am tongue-tied, an enterprise supplier development program, this is something that would add value to that. So that is it in a nutshell, because I know I don't have lots of time and I can talk for a lot of time. So that's the SMME. There's some information on our website. You can go and have a look. If you'd like more information, you know, to really talk more about what it's about and how it could be of value, please drop me a line and I'm happy to have a discussion with you. So then we move on to professionalization of supply chain management. And this is something that I have been drumming on about for the longest time. And I really think I'm starting to sound like a stuck record. But 
the, the, the truth of the, of the story behind this is we have finally reached the point after a long, long time of working very hard. Professionalization in terms of the accredita accredited professional body status is not easy to um, is not easy to achieve. It's also that much more difficult when you're dealing with an organization that's volunteer driven. So SafeX is driven by a board of, of volunteers that give strategic guidance and direction. Um, and, and if we're lacking board members that have a, a specific, um, how can I say, skill in, in an area like this, it becomes all, all more of a challenge. We're also a very lean and mean team at SAFEX, which makes it even more difficult. So we find ourselves overlapping in all sorts of areas that maybe wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily want to be doing, but we kind of don't have any choice on. But professionalization, we are, we are up and ready to go. We are currently grandfathering. It's a, it's a terrible word to use, but it's a word that is, is really, really used internationally in terms of taking people that we believe have the right skills, work experience, qualification, and attributes into um, a recognized designation. So we would start with our member base for that. So if, if any of you are interested, please drop me a note. And let's see which designation you would align against because we are going to give opportunity to our members first to force track them into designation. That's and um, hey, you're confusing me with the screen there. <laughs> I was trying to show the different designations slide quickly for you. <laughs> no, it's fine. So, so basically, supply chain management is the core of it's, it's the core of everything. Our, our economy depends on supply chain management. I know that's a big, bold statement, but if you really unpack it, that's the reality of the situation. We are absolutely um, wrought with corruption and, and crime and fraud, and the bulk of that sits within the sphere of supply chain management. So we need to do these things in order to try to curb and prevent that from continuing to happen. It's not going to be easy, make no mistake, but it's a step in the right direction. So if you are a professional, professionally designated individual and you are found to be, um, sorry, I was, uh, I was muted there, it wasn't me that did that. You can then, you can then have your professional designation revoked and you won't be able to practice anymore within the profession of supply chain management. So Elaine, please just scroll down. So it's all about accountability, um, taking accountability for your actions, for the profession taking accountability for the individuals and their organization's behavior to make sure that we ensure that the pace of our development in South Africa, in terms of our international counterparts, stays pace, that our people are always um, properly trained, educated, skilled, knowledgeable, and accountable. And they have to live by prescribed values and a code of conduct, which is very, very important. That, that part of it is really key to the whole thing, is the ethics and accountability. So, and everything else kind of pivots around that, but that, that in essence is, is what it's all about. So it's to re regulate and elevate the standards, improve the profession so it has a better, rep a better reputation. I mean, that sounds bad, but you never really heard of anybody that said at school, I want to be a supply chain manager. Um, most people have fallen into it by default. So it, there's a lot of things going on around the, in the space of supply chain management at the moment. Um, all around this type of conversation. Um, and it's not just with SAFEX, it's other professional bodies, um, it's National Treasury, there are all sorts of other organizations involved, which is a good thing because everybody's sitting up and, and taking it seriously. Please go down, Elaine. So why is it important? So professionalization develops people and develops organizations. So good people, good organizations. People improve supply chains. 
we can have as much technology as we want. And yes, there's AI and there's robotics and there's all sorts of things that are coming to play as we move into the fourth industrial revolution. But there is still going to need to be specialized professionals for the profession. So we still need creative thinkers. We need strategic thinkers. We need um, a different type of thinker. So the, the supply chain manager of the future is going to have a very different set of skills compared to what they have now. But people still drive supply chains and improve them. And supply chains improve economies and economies improve lives. So if your supply chains are good, if they're working effectively and efficiently, all shall be well. And we know from the case of COVID and the, um, I can't recall that, that panel that the boat got stuck in, that um, real stuff does happen. And if your, your risk mitigation plans are not in place, and remember this all goes back to supply chain, you're going to come short. So it goes far beyond the surface of just talking about supply chain management. Um, Elaine, please go down. So let me let me talk a bit quickly because everybody else wants to talk. So what do we want for the employer? They have practitioners of competence and they will remain competent because they have to maintain their designation through CPD. Continuous professional development. Those of you that do the APEX certifications know too well about the maintenance, having to count those points. Practitioners that are ethically accountable for their behavior at all times. There's no question. You stand what by your by your your ethics that you've committed to, and there's no deviation from that. Better leverage your supply chain is a differentiator in your business. Let it stand out from your competitors. It's better. Why? Because we have professional, knowledgeable individuals that operate our supply chain. Increase your ability to maintain your reputation in the marketplace. Imagine you're an organization that is full of skilled, competent, knowledgeable people that are ethical, accountable, and the organization runs like that. The whole ethos is like that. That's the culture of the organization. Wouldn't you rather want to do business with an organization like that? I think it definitely would set you aside from anybody else. Retain and grow market share due to high service levels achieved. It goes without saying that if you have skilled people that know what they're doing, your service levels should exceed the, the, the very basic expectations at the very, very least. Can they please change for me? So this is what it's all about for you guys. How does professionalization benefit the individual? So you will be recognized for prior learning and experience. So if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I don't have a qualification, so now I'm going to miss the boat on this one. No, you don't. So we can RPL you and look at your experience, um, your knowledge that you've learned on the job, whatever the case may be. Um, and we take that into consideration when we look at you for a, a designation. So all is not lost. Don't worry about that because there are not all that many people that came into supply chain with a supply chain management qualification. Most of it's on the job. Continuous learning, we talked about that, key to a successful career. Because you'll be learning, you'll be growing, you'll be looking for, for career growth and um, promotion. Increase your credibility. You are endorsed as a professional, professional supply chain management individual. So you are credible. We have verified that you're credible. You've committed to be credible. And if you're not credible, you're not going to be on the register of supply chain professionals. Recognize through your expertise and ethics. It stands out. It's, um, it's looked up and industry will recognize you for that. Expand your marketability in the job market. Make yourself more marketable. Make yourself more attractive as an individual for that job role. Because jobs are short and um, they're looking for the best of. So what is the best of? Somebody that's got the right skills, the right knowledge, and that has the ethics. We tick all the boxes. Join the exclusive league of supply chain management professionals. Yes, we all want to be there, and they used to call it an old boys club. 
We don't do that anymore. But this is a group of people that have all taken a step towards professionalization that believe in the professionalization of supply chain management, believe in their growth and development. And by doing this, they're making a change to the industry. They're making a change to the organizations. In the grander scheme of things, they're making a change towards the South African economy and taking a stand to make a change. And of course, bringing great proficiencies to your organization. The minute that you have more skills and more knowledge, you're able to bring that back to your organization and make good changes. That is provided that your company lets you do that. In some cases, people go for training and then they come back and they're not that you can't change that. We don't want to see you doing things like that. There are those challenges, but there are ways around that. The next one, Elaine, if there is one. <laughs> Okay, and what does it mean for the public? So really, uh, the question here could be asked, well, who cares? This is important because the public, you, me, and everybody else here is kind of sick and tired of hearing about the corruption and the lack of accountability. I think every time we read a news headline about somebody has been suspended, we all get excited and we think, oh, something's going to be done, and then it all goes away again. So the minute that we start pushing this out into the market, um, it will be about the accountability of the individual for their behavior, the company. We want to hold the company accountable for the behavior of their people indirectly and recourse to a professional body. So SAPEX will have to put up their hand and say, we have to take responsibility for this. These professionals are not behaving by the book. And basically it's a public compact um, that is endorsed and supported by all. And we've talked about this a lot, the Code of Ethics, which will ensure compliance and responsible behavior forever, as long as you're working in supply chain management profession. And I mean, a lot of us sit here and think, but why is this such a big thing? Why do we have to keep going on about Code of Ethics, Code of Conduct? And the sad reality is that because people are not driven by old value, values and, and that type of behavior, they kind of go off the path at times. And in some cases, and, and this, is, this is generally a problem, some of the people that work in companies or for people that are experienced this and living this can't speak out about it because they are such major repercussions. So it's a long and ongoing fight, but we've started the journey and let's see how many people we can get on board to support it. The more that are for it, you know, the more power we have over the people that don't. Okay, next slide. Oh, am I done? Okay, so these are the five levels of designation. So if you look at them from an NQF level, I think that will give you a better understanding of at what level you would probably want to apply. Um, we will have the detailed, very detailed, um, competency model available up on the website in the next day or two. It's just gone in for a, an update, so that will be loaded. You can then look in detail at what each one of these designations looks like from a competency point of view and what's behind it and what you need to have to be eligible for it. Um, but again, if you've got any questions, please feel free to contact me. Okay. Okay, and it, it's all about personal development as well. This is very, very important. It's for you and it's about you. So you are, it's, it's developed in such a way that it's intended to develop people from the bottom to the top. There's always the, the case to be said that we only de develop at the top as executive or the senior management. No, this is all inclusive. And it's intended to start generating that, um, that knowledge base and that interest from the grassroots level. Let's get people on board entry level and transform the way that they work and do business by bringing them in on board early, giving them access to all this good stuff so they can grow out their career far quicker than um, people that have been in the profession that haven't had these opportunities. So there are the people that are quite content to kind of sit at the bottom and say, no, I'm, ha I'm happy where I am. I'm quite cool to do this. But there are people that have got this, I want to get on that fast track career ladder. Um, and for those people, this is obviously the perfect opportunity. So yes, it's about personal development and growth. And you should never stop learning. I'm sure Bev will tell you that because 
we have a number of our older people that do facilitation they're in their 70s and these guys are still doing international certifications i'm just not sure how their brain copes with it because i certainly couldn't but anyway that's that's me is that my last line Lay? oh goodness me okay so the designation structure provides those in such a profession with a development journey yes and it's intended to encourage personal and professional growth personal is for you professional is to add value to your organization as well as the industry at large and i just want to make a point about the supply chain management profession we're they're a great group of people i mean the safex community and our family are really good people and there's lots of good conversations and network networking that happens at our events um in our sessions whatever the case is whether it's online or whether it's uh, you know face to face and that's really important but it's also important that you as a supply chain professional have to give back to the profession so you can you can take what you need but you need to give back and that's the only way we can balance and we can continue to grow the future talent for supply chain management professionals it's a there are there's a big skill shortage for people in the profession and we also need to make sure that the people that are coming up and our future our newbies are ready to take on the role and to take forward the profession so as a supply chain management professional it's your responsibility to give back and to help contribute to the profession too in any which way you can so think about that whether it's mentoring whether it's um coaching whether it's um getting involved in the young professional program that uh, that claire's overseeing um, she would be delighted to have people to speak for her and, and get get on board so there are many ways to do it so have a think about how you would like to do it and how you'd like to get involved is that me now oh my gosh <laughs> it's difficult when i'm controlling the slide okay so basically the key criteria for achievement of a designation is education, qualification, experience, work, that's basically your work experience and what you've been up to, an exam or an, um, a board assessment, what we like to call it, and your ethics. Ethics, 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 I can't say it loud enough, should probably be involved at the bottom. Oh my goodness, okay. So when I talked about all these competencies, um, and this competency model, we have a framework and it's made up of 11 groups. These are the groups that make up the competency framework. And be behind that framework is a very, very detailed model. It packs every one of these into the designation level. So for example, procurement, what does procurement look like at an NQF level four, our associate designation? And what does it look like for the executive level? So it unpacks that in detail and what they would be doing and how they would be doing it um, within the scope of the profession. So it's a fantastic document and I can't wait to get it up on the website so you can all have a look at it. It's a really, really, um, how can I say, it's a, it's a work of absolute, I don't have the words, but it's just something to be very, very proud of. It's, a, it's an incredible work of art, if I can put it that way. So if that's not me finished, I'm going to end it because nobody else can get a chance to speak. So anything professional body, any questions you have, please feel free to drop me an email. I'm happy to chat to you about any of it. Thank you for your time. And I hope that I haven't jabbered too much for too long, <laughs> but thank you. We know that you are passionate about this, Tanya. And um, thank you for all of that. I wanted to um, just, um, just say that the the team has definitely put a lot of time and energy and and money into this the association has just really for the benefit of our members so it's really been quite a long journey but it'll be worth it at the end right over to bev we, we're likely to run over past five o'clock um so if you need to leave urgently please do but we will send you the slides and the recording but it would be great if you could stay on with us and we won't be too much longer past um, past five. So over you to Bev, over to you, Bev. Thanks, Claire. Yeah, I'm going to keep it quite short and sweet. I do see a number of people in this audience that I recognize to be studying already. So that's also always great to know. 
I just wanted to um, touch base on maybe information as a new member or new to SAFEX that you may not know regarding education. Um, so yes, my slides are, are short and sweet and um, I'm also always available on email. You can contact me directly on, on the phone if there's any questions you have, but I think, yeah, let's go on to the next slide, Elaine, and I'm just gonna go through my points quite quickly. Yeah, no, that's not mine either. <laughs> okay. All right, so you may not be aware that we are, um, SAPEX is a representative for international organizations such as ASCM, IBF, DDI, and ISCEA. Now I've got all the, you know, you die by acronym when you are part of the supply chain world. Um, so I did sort of spell it out what they all stand for on my slide, so it's always easy to refer to. Um, we are the custodians of their international certifications here in Africa. And um, we are the pre premier lead channel partner of ASCM who are based in the US. Now, ASCM have APEC certifications and that's uh, where a lot of my day-to-day my -day, um, work is kind of involved around. Um, we are selling self-study material or courseware rather and exams for all three of the APEC, certification um, APEC certifications. And we are basically here to assist learners in our part of the world in real time. So you don't have to wait the eight hours that it takes Chicago to wake up. You can get answers in real time. If we can't assist, we refer it and we usually can help you quite quickly. Um, and, and people that are doing APEC certifications would know there's, there's all sorts of little gremlins that creep into the, the process um, along the way. And that's what we're here for. Make it our problem and we can assist you. So we don't employ instructors, we don't offer courses. We actually are, um, we have authorized education partners who have businesses in their own rights, who are training consultants and, and they offer the courses and the classes and they um, do online tutoring now. It's a new option as well that they've been offering. They also offer our local SAPEX courses. So if you want to have any more, know any more information about um, any of the certifications, any of the SAPEX courses. We've got a lot of information on the website. If it's not clear, you're very welcome to pop us a mail, give us a call. Google in the office will be able to help you on the phone. I can help you by phone or email. So if there's anything that you want to, to know about or if we can point you in the right direction, that's what we're here for. Okay, Elaine, next, next slide. Um, okay, and then one of the other things that, that is also good for learning, and, and especially once you're certified and you need to maintain your certification. Um, with the APEC certifications, it's every five years. You have to have earned 75 points over that five-year period. And being a member is a good way to do that. You get points for the membership that you've taken out. You get points for attending events that you get invited to as a member. Um, and if you do... A, uh, other learnings like the workshops that we're offering for for the other organizations that we're involved with so um, IBF we we offer the CPF workshop uh, DDI is the DDMRP and um, ICA we are offering the CSCA so all of that there's information around those those uh, various workshops and once we are uh, once they're on the calendar as a member you get information about it in your inbox if you want to register it's easy as clicking and registering uh, as a member, you would get discounted rates for attending any events that we have got pricing on. And that's basically be in a nutshell. So, so have a look at the website. Um, have a look if there's anything you want to know, if there's a certification you're interested in, anything that you are unsure of, or if you want more information on, please feel free to contact me. And that's me. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks. Elaine. Thanks, Pep. Thanks very much. Um, as um, somebody has said, you really are a star and extraordinarily helpful. So thank you for that. Great. Next slide, Elaine. Uh, I'll just whiz through this very quickly um, in the next the last couple of minutes that the team has given me. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so um, I think some of you, and you could put it, put your hand up if this if this is applicable, um, knows SAPEX really because of its annual conference and perhaps didn't realize all of the amazing work that actually the association does as well as hosting the leading supply chain event in Africa. 
Um, this year, our theme is refine, rebuild, and reconnect. And that's really apropos the, the crisis here we had last year where people are refining their supply chains, rebuilding them, rebuilding their businesses, and hopefully anytime soon now we can, uh, we can reconnect. Next slide, please, Elaine. The event will be held online on the 24th to the 26th of August, 2021. And um, please have a, keep having a look at our conference website. The link is there and that will be shared with you just so that you can keep up to date. We are constantly putting on our confirmed speakers so you can see who is in the, in the lineup. And hopefully the program will be circulated soon. So that will also help you with deciding to um, attend. The registration fees for members are only 1500 Rand, excluding VAT, and there is um, a discount if there are more than um, there are a number of people registering. So please look out for that as well. Um, the, the platform decision was a very uh, considered and measured one um, just to really look at the, the importance of data security and uh, also making it easy for people to network and exhibitors to get exposure. So um, this, we have spent a lot of time and really considered this, this well. Um, there are some sponsorship opportunities for organizations who wish to brand their, their company uh, through the SAPEX marketing um, channels and to get exposure to a wide range of industries, delegates, um, public and private sector, and it really um, the return on investment is um, is very high. So please reach out to me if you think, or put your marketing team onto me if you think that this might suit your organisation to to be an exhibitor or sponsor of the event. Thanks, Elaine. Um, just to touch quickly on the events, and then I'm done. Um, oh no, I'm not done. Sorry, I've got one more slide. Um, you know, we even though we haven't been able to meet up, etc. The continuous learning does also take place through, with uh, through our events and our webinars, and this is just a lineup of what we've got um, through to July. And um, on Thursday we have a self leadership journey webinar, and um, then we have a, just a fun uh, brain of the Association of Supply Chain Africa quiz taking place also on Thursday. So have a look at the website; the link is there. And it's very easy, as Elaine will alluded to earlier, to register if you are already on the system as a member. It's very easy to to register for our events, and most of them are free, so it's not um, prohibitive to attend. Um, we started well. We started a while ago, but formalised this year the SAPEX Young Professional and Student Student Initiative, and the the reason for that really is to is to tailor make webinars, networking events um, for this uh, body of members, which is very, very important to us and for the succession of the, the um, and the growth of the profession. So there are lots of different um, opportunities and membership benefits for this sp sp specific initiative. Thanks, Elaine. And um, for example, you can change your slide, Elaine, thanks. If we have another one, do we? We do. And it was really just, just to sort of fill the needs that, that we found that our young professionals needed to have. Uh, we formed a committee at the beginning of the year, and we've had two events, and one is coming up on the 10th of June. They are very well um, supported, and um, it's very exciting for us to, to see the support from this category of membership. On the 22nd of June, for example, we're trying something new, a coffee chat with some mentors and whereby um, young professionals can ask questions in an informal environment and, um, and they can get some feedback from people who've been in the profession for longer than them. We're hoping for a young professional conference in October this year. Uh, it'll be virtual. There's a mix of presenters as in uh, people with more experience, as well as giving students an opportunity to also speak and hopefully to do so by um, poster presentations as well. Um, so there's an opportunity here for sponsorship and also for people who may want to speak at this conference. So please reach out to me if you think this might be interesting for you or your organization, and we'll certainly 
um, accommodate you and slot you into the program somehow, I would, um, I would welcome that very much. Um, I think I'm done, Elaine. Oh, the, here are, please follow us on our social media platforms. And um, there's a lot of information on that. So please do so. Um, we've got quite a, a good following and um, it is increasing on a daily basis. Right, um, so that's that's us done and it's only two minutes over. over. So um, any questions, anyone wanting to reach out and let us know where you're from and if you'd like to connect with anybody else on this forum, please feel free to do so. And thank you all for taking the time. And um, I think Elaine will be sending out the slides probably tomorrow morning, Elaine. Um, yeah. And yeah, so we will, um, we, will, we will do that as soon as we can, probably tomorrow morning. Anything else? I see, uh, I see that Jenny is with us. And as I mentioned earlier, she's the COO of, of, of SAPEX and is um, an amazing woman who just connects everybody and has a wealth of knowledge. So if there's anything that you need to know or you want to be connected with somebody, she is also willing to help all of you. Thanks, Claire. Thanks everyone for being here. Thanks for becoming members. We're really excited to have you on board. And I think you'll agree that it's a great team that we have and thank you for supporting them. And we look forward to helping you along the way throughout your membership time, which we hope is going to be for many, many years. Awesome. We look forward to engaging with you in different areas webinars, the events and at the conference and great. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening and stay warm and well. Thank you all.